On a trip to Switzerland some years ago to visit my son, I acquired a nice set of Swiss carving tools. And uh, this is the till I built for that purpose. The best way to join the four sides of the carcass is with dovetails, which may be either machine or hand cut. I chose to hand cut mine. We need to cut dados on each side of the carcass into which wood partitions are slid and these house each of the drawers. Laying out and cutting these dados is a challenge, no matter how you do it. A good way to cut the back groove for the back panel is with a router table and a quarter inch bit. That is because it has to be a stopped groove on the tail sides of the carcass, and that's the easiest way to cut that. The dados have to stop at the back groove, and that's the challenge. In that you don't want to cut through this back portion of the carcass. I have found uh, the easiest way to do that is with a back saw by hand, but it is a great router job. Uh, it can be done on a router table just as well. So, your next step really is to lay this into five equal spaces with half inch dados between them. I have found the easiest way to do that is to set a set of dividers to exactly a half an inch and then calculate what the rest of this space is divided by five and set of dividers to that. And then I step off each of these increments with the dividers and I adjust this set of dividers until it comes out perfect. I can now put this strip against the front edge of each side of the carcass and with a nice square I can simply scribe lines. I now take a back saw and I just come in right on that line. I'm just cutting a little to the left of the line. The right side of my saw is splitting the line and I'm just walking that saw down like this starting to walk that cut right across the board. You notice I'm keeping some fingers right here up above the teeth to just sort of guide that saw, not let it wander. I'm not cutting overly much here. And as I start to get over across the board, I'll come to the back again right on that gauge line and I'll take just small saw cuts and to keep from denning that, I'll just stick a scraper blade in there like that. And that keeps the saw from hurting the side of the groove. As you start to come all the way across the piece like this, it's helpful to put a couple of fingers or hold the front of the saw, however you want to do it. Two fingers is often good because you have a little more sense of feel and control. And it's almost better to saw in one direction as you get, especially as you get deeper, because you clear the sawdust out to the back and don't bring it back into the kerf. Okay, it's now time to clean the waste out of here. And you can just use a chisel for this, especially if you don't have a router plane like this. This has uh, actually got several different blades of different widths. It's called a router plane. Every craftsman had one probably up to World War II. Often called a witch's tooth because it had one tag tooth. But it will quite handily take that wood right out of there. And there we go. And there's our dados. And they ought to line up pretty nicely. Whether you machine cut or hand cut through dovetails, it is customary 
to make the tails and the pins a bit longer than the thickness of the material so that when we assemble this, the pin is actually going to stick up above the level of this piece of wood. So if you're going to have a really good tight glue up, it's necessary to apply some what are called clamping culls to the piece. And I cut all of these out at once. I laid out the pin pattern on these pieces of plywood and cut oversized windows that we can now, when we put clamps across this, we'll be able to pull that hard together. A good glue up with nice tight joints everywhere. Okay, I've and now cleaned up the carcass with uh, hand planes at first to bring all the dovetails down flush. And then I sanded it with an orbital sander to make it really smooth and I've now applied a coat of oil finish. Each of the partitions should not reach all the way back. They should not touch the back panel for they will expand and contract in this direction. So they need a little bit of space. I've planed a little bit of taper into them so that they're tighter the further back in the carcass they go. As you can see, that's tightening up and actually has to be pushed hard to get it all the way home. And I'm going to bring that down flush. They should not be glued other than a drop or two at the front because they need to float and expand and contract and not touch the back of the carcass. A great way to make drawers, especially small ones like this, is with a drawer joint cutter. This nifty router bit cuts both halves of the joint with the same setup. The fronts and backs are run with the inside face against the table. The sides are run with the inside face against the fence in vertical mode. We're left with a really nice tight joint. Okay, I took the first four pieces out of the router table and I plowed a groove in all four sides at the bottom and installed a bottom glued the drawer up. But before I did that, I cut some dados in the same way that I cut the dados in the carcass from the top to the groove for the bottom. And into these, I can then slide these 1 8 inch partitions, which will keep the chisels separate. And bingo, fits great. I've got a, I've drilled the front and I've got a knob ready to install. And there we go. At this point, it will slide too far into the carcass. We need to install drawer stops. And to do that, we will glue a little 1 8 inch piece of wood down at that line. And that will stop the drawer perfectly. We'll do that on each side. 